Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Earth Tongue by developer Eric Hermit. Uh, this is an early work in progress version of an upcoming vivarium simulator where we can take a procedurally generated world and essentially grow a bunch of fungus in it. And I know that sounds like a strange thing to want to do, uh, but believe it or not there's actually a pretty large contingent of people that would derive some pleasure from that including myself. As you might know, I have quite a fondness for fungus for whatever reason. I've never tried to grow any myself, uh, but it does seem like a thing that I would glean some sort of enjoyment from, at least in the concept of the therapy that's involved with watching things grow and transform. Uh, so what we're dealing with right now, this early version, uh, is missing a lot of the features that will probably be included in the final version, which I believe is releasing on January 5th. And you're probably wondering, hey, it's releasing so soon to when you put this video up, why didn't you just cover the final version? Well, I really like seeing things as they're a work in progress and as they transform from an early version to a final version. Uh, so if anything, I wanted to get a little bit of awareness for this out before the actual game released, uh, in which case I might revisit it later. Uh, I've actually seen some footage of the game in its finished version. It looks like we'll be able to exert a bit more influence than we are right now, considering, well, we can't exert literally any influence. Uh, we actually can just scroll left and right in what appears to be sort of a starbound style scrolling world and observe as things grow and change and morph and, you know, terraform their own way through. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, a lot of different competing styles of fungus all sort of vying for the same bit of land. And each time we start a new world in this, it actually appears that the land starts as a, a totally fresh seed, uh, even with the possibility of perhaps growing different types of fungus that might not exist from one seed to the other. Uh, I've generated probably about 10 of them so far, and I, there have been times when I've not seen uh, these sort of crimson red blobby looking ones, but I have seen, you know, a different version of other ones that don't show up in other well, you get the idea. Uh, there's also a few insects that'll show up here. I see we've got some sort of a mosquito, a snail. I think there might be a mantis of some kind. I've seen uh, some sort of, what is that, a shell there, that little blue blob. Uh, and then it's just going to sort of rain nutrients and things are just going to keep happening. And eventually, I assume, uh, the fungus is going to uh, sort of impede on each of the land areas that they've sort of grown into. Uh, there may also be just natural, you know, geographic features that keep them from doing that. As you can see here, this pink fungus uh, seems to exist in this little valley, which it might not be able to grow up and over, uh, unless maybe one of the insects comes and spreads it, which I'm not sure quite how they work. I would assume probably each one of these fungi has its own uh, methods for reproduction and how it's going to exist in the landscape. As you can see, this tall one here seems to have rooted into the ground a little bit, and there's actually roots that seem to be existing now, uh, non-adjacent to other roots, so I'm not sure quite how that works. Maybe it's spreading out and some are dying off, and it's creating a path that other ones might be able to uh, show up on, and maybe one of these is going to become dominant over this whole landscape, and I'm not sure quite how that's going to play out, but it should be very interesting. So it looks like in the final version, from what I've seen here, you can bring new bugs in, you can bring fungus in, and you can change the weather. Uh, it also, of course, has the same stat tracking that you see. We've got an age uh, that is rapidly increasing, I guess, by the year or by the minute. I'm not sure how what method of scale we're using to look at the time here, but it's up to 950 roughly right now. We've got a nutrient level that seems to be fluctuating, I guess, as the uh, particulate matter rains down. At, uh, well, just tick down to 68,000. We've got moisture, which I guess we can modify once we can change the weather. And we've got biomass, which I guess is sort of representative of our total fungi uh, weight count at 1,930, 40 something. It's, you know, fluctuating pretty quickly. And it's got a record top mass of 1950. Uh, so I guess we're trying to shoot. Oh, okay. We've got a little bit more nutrient rain coming down. And that seems to have raised our top mass quite substantially, now from 1950 up to 2034. I'm trying to see if any of these mushrooms seem to be vying for space. It looks like maybe the pink one has started to spread out a little bit, but then the snail seems to be eating them uh, pretty rapidly, just about as fast as it can spread, actually. Oh, no, it popped up and then it vanished again. I wonder if in the final version I'll be able to sort of play around with the time sort of sim style. Because uh, I imagine as you get into some very, you know, high scale level... Uh, time, it might actually end up that maybe a lot of this stuff can be simulated super, super quickly, and maybe if you're interested in it, you can sort of see some of the tendencies of each of this fungi 
uh, much more rapidly and then see how that maps in the smaller scale. So for example, like I said, I was trying to figure out if this one that uh, puts roots into the ground, if this is going to spread and take over all of the ground, well, I'd be able to observe that much more accurately and usefully if I was able to uh, jack up the age very, very quickly up to like 20,000 years or whatever the time scale happens to be. Uh, so, you know, there's useful reasons to want to see things go by very quickly. I also imagine this could have the appeal of something sort of like mountain in that over large amounts of time you would start to see uh, the ground start to change, things sort of start to adapt and become very, very unique. Where in this case, I think most of the time when you start it, you might get variants of one or two different types of fungi, uh, but largely you're going to end up with just like, okay, there's a smattering of green here, a smattering of pink here, a smattering of orange or red here, uh, and then over time that's going to sort of work itself out. Uh, but just in general, I think being able to mess around with those scales is going to be much more interesting, as right now it's very passive, and, and I wonder too if like in the way Mountain approached things, if this is sort of trying to position itself as just leave this open in the background and watch the time scale go by uh, and just let things happen. I mean, what if this happened in uh, real time, you know, uses your system clock and uses your local weather or something to... Uh, you know, uh, sort of create a situation that could be unique to your own situation in real life. Uh, you know, you'd have the day go by just as in sort of an Animal Crossing thing, and you could see things change uh, in its own unique time scale to you, uh, whereas everybody that plays this, even in real time, is going to get a different situation. And then, of course, you should be allowed to, you know, modify those things and play on random seeds or whatever you happen to want to do anyway. Uh, I'd also be curious to know if there's going to be more insects or more ecology in general. I mean, not that I have any issues with what's here right now. It seems like it's fine. I'd uh, just be curious to know what other variables could be introduced. I mean, weather's got to be a huge one, having the ability to change the moisture. Oh man, it looks like the bugs have totally taken down most of the stalk-based fungi here. We're down to just like the two, three stalks left. And it looks like those snails are doing a number on the root system as well. So I guess that's there's uh, the snail's tendency seems to be to dig down. We've also got some sort of green grubs that might be doing some damage as well. I wonder too if there could be parasitic fungi that maybe like some of them take over the insects and then they could be used to spread. Well, I would assume if that was the case, maybe they would be dominant in nearly every situation. Um, obviously, the game is lacking sound and music right now. I would assume, and maybe I'm you know mistaken to think this, but I would think probably in the final version there's going to be some sort of soothing soundtrack to go along with this. I could see a lot of things that could match and mesh really well with this presentation. Uh, also, of course, it's got sort of this stop-motion style animation to it, which I think is just based on uh, a change happening with each increment of the time scale. I don't know if I like that or if I would prefer something smoother. I guess it just makes sense for what it is, uh, since we're using this regimented way of things moving from one uh, moment to the next. Uh, hopefully the music does not necessarily follow re that regimented time scale and perhaps could be a little bit more uh, just sort of out there, just a little bit more ethereal, more pad-like, uh, maybe just soothing in general. Because I imagine if you took this staccato approach to the soundtrack, the way it looks in the animation, uh, you'd end up with something that could be a little bit jarring or maybe a, a bit obnoxious to have open in the background. I'm sure there's a way to do it tastefully, but off the top of my head I'm not sure exactly what it would be. So it looks like our biomass is actually decreasing rapidly. It looks like maybe the insects have mostly taken over here, and we're nowhere near our max of 2034 now. We're actually floating around the 800 region, which is uh, not boding well. I imagine if all of the fungus dies, uh, perhaps the insects won't have anything to live off of either, and perhaps uh, that'll just be kind of the end of our world, and it'll just sort of fade away to obscurity. I wonder if any of the ground has changed scale or size at all during the course of this, because that could be a whole other thing if maybe there could be events that happen, maybe soil erosion. If you cause it to rain too much, it would cause, you know, pockets of water to collect and things to sort of break away in certain spots, uh, thereby giving rise to certain other types of fungus that can climb the walls or ones that prefer to settle in flat regions and ones that prefer to settle on the top of the moisture. I guess there's all kinds of different options to go with. I had no idea I was so interested in mushrooms, actually. It seems like a really kind of a cool topic. Of course, you'd have to get into bioluminescence, because what would be mushrooms without that option? Maybe there's ones that thrive off of the light that's produced by other mushrooms and only want to grow near those. Uh, of course, it might also matter what kind of planet you end up on. Maybe this could be, uh, because I've seen in the fin uh, finished version, it looks like there's going to be a whole bunch of parallaxing background art, and perhaps you could set a different kind of scale where 
you know, you end up on a different planet with different soil tendencies, and then certain types of soil would encourage certain types of fungus to grow, and thereby uh, maybe could result in some sort of collection mechanic where you want to try and, you know, grow a different planet of every type, and then, you know, fill out a some sort of logbook of all the various types of uh, fungus that you could collect and find. I think that would be pretty interesting, as well as observe their tendencies and keep some sort of scientific journal about uh, what those tendencies might be. Maybe you could actually sort of jot them down on your own, or maybe it would have a series of variables that you could toggle between that's like, okay, uh, this uh, bronzish sort of brown-orange one tends to settle along flat surfaces and doesn't seem to take root or maybe has a you know, a more hardy lifestyle to it, whereas some of the stalk-based ones seem to die out very quickly with certain insect influence. I don't know, it feels like there's maybe a little bit of a detective story to be told in that as well. So it's amazing all these things you can glean from just a game or an experience where you can just scroll left and right, because right now that's all I can do, yet for some reason my mind has gone wild with all the possibilities, and I would love to see where Earth Tongue goes, so that's definitely what I'm going to do, and in the future I'm going to revisit this uh, hopefully catch the full version of it and give some of my thoughts as how things have adapted and changed from this uh, early work in progress version. And uh, I wouldn't say to use this video necessarily as particularly indicative of what to expect from the final version, because like I've said, very different features even just from now to the little bit of a screenshot and like a GIF that I've seen on the website. Uh, so, you know, go into it expecting more than this and you will not be disappointed from what I can see anyway. Uh, but that's going to do it for today's episode. A very interesting little experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I'd love to hear your comments, what you think about something like Earth Tongue. Please do let me know. I'd love to have a little discussion in the comments, as I always do. And of course, if you enjoyed the episode in general, feel free to leave a like. That does help out the series and helps keep this uh, propagating so more people can find these artistic, unique, and original indie game games and experiences. I, I guess I shouldn't classify this as much as a game as an experience, uh, but I definitely like to go after both types of things. Man, the world is really sad at this point. There's almost nothing left of it. I would hope there'd be a way to reseed and just sort of start over or, or like, cause emergency nutrient rain in the event that our biomasses drop down to almost nothing. We're down to 171, so we're, yeah, we're almost a dead planet at this point. But also hope there, there might be a way to generate a larger world even than this, because it scrolls pretty quickly, honestly. Like, if you look at, look at that little green slug, and then we'll just scroll through and see uh, to the point where that reappears again... Is that it right there? I think that might have been it. I just already went around in a circle. Yeah, it's, a, it's like one and a half scrolls to get back to where we were. Anyway, that's going to do it for another day, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, if you don't mind, leave a like. And I will be back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Talk to you all later.